In this episode of Cars from Japan, presented by Cars from Japan, we're taking a look at an R32 four-door with a GTR running gear swap. Welcome to our very first episode of Cars from Japan, where we review unique and oddball and modified cars that have been brought over to Australia from our friends at Cars from Japan. Long story short, they import a whole bunch of different cars. Some are mainstream to sell, and other things are quirky, oddball stuff that's just unique that they've either bought for specific buys or because Joe just thinks they're cool. Everything from things like this, a four-door R32 with a GTR swap, Polestar GTIRs, rare and unique STI, Tommy Kyra and Nismo models of cars, you name it. And as a big JDM fan, hey, I don't mind experiencing new things because although I love my GTRs, I'd like trying out everything in the JDM scene. There's a lot of cars out there that I've heard of that I've still never driven. So this is a great chance to get behind the wheel of all sorts of weird and wonderful JDM cars and share it with you guys. So the first car that we're going to review is something that's, well, pretty close to home for us, an R32 Skyline. But this one is unique for a couple of reasons. It's not just a four-door, it's a GTS 4 four-door, which means it comes with an RB20 all-wheel drive from factory. Now, you've probably seen plenty of two-door GTS 4s, but I've only ever seen online a handful of four-doors, and this is probably the first one I've seen in real life in front of me. Now, that probably sounds pretty dull, an RB20 four-door R32, but with the floor pan being able to accept the all-wheel drive system and the front suspension ready, for a swap over to GTR running gear, which is exactly what this has. It has an R34 GTR engine and the matching R34 GTR six-speed jet drag gearbox, which means this thing is pretty cool. So let's take a look over it and see what else has done to this before we take it for a drive. So it's a pretty basic setup. It's an R34 GTR engine, standard turbo, standard dump pipe. It's got a cat-back exhaust system, a Pexi air filter kit. It's got an aftermarket radiator and oil cooler, uh, and it has a power of C ECU as well. So not crazy mods, but obviously it's R34 GTR running gear, so it's gonna be pretty awesome regardless. Now I have a thing for R34 GTR wheels on R32s. I've always loved them, so this is a really good match, but obviously having R34 wheels to match the R34 engine and gearbox. Now instead of Brembo's though, AP Racing brakes up front, which is pretty awesome, and there's two piston Brembo's up the back as well. So it has the brake upgrade to match the power upgrade. So inside there's plenty of GTR stuff as well. They've put R32 GTR front seats in it, but they have been retrimmed. There is a GTR 320k an hour Nismo cluster in here, and they've got the triple gauges in the center as well. So obviously now we can read front torque and oil temperature and boost as well as voltage, everything that the GTR has. Momo steering wheel is obviously aftermarket, so is the retrim, there's a boost controller and the Power FC handset. This is actually pretty old school cool because early 2000s, Power FCs were everywhere, but now they're considered, well, pretty old school. So yeah, I feel like it's a bit of a retro time capsule in here as well as something that's pretty cool. So uh, let's take it for a drive, see what it's like. First impressions. This thing looks like a bit of a time capsule for early 2000s GTR stuff. Oh, and it drives like that. It's got Japanese coilovers in it with 18s and it's lowered. So the, the coilovers you see from cars in Japan are a little bit stiffer than what you'd probably put in on Australian roads. But it just, it drives exactly how it looks like it would drive. It's a little bit old school with power FC and things like that. The strangest part is looking down and seeing four window controls and looking behind you and seeing back seats that have room, but what I'm looking forward to is this. Wow. 
Now this car hasn't got a ridiculous amount of power. I'd say probably 300 wheel horsepower, standard turbos with power seat boost control, but standard downpipes and stuff like that. So it's not ridiculously fast, but the jet track with 411s just makes it so much fun and so much more drivable than with a five speed. The biggest problem with the five speed is that like even 7,000 RPM in second gear is 100 k's an hour. So just a first second gear pull is breaking the speed limit in most locations other than a freeway, which can make the GTR very hard to exploit on the road because RB26s, you need to rev them. They're not a low down torque, you know, 2,000, 2,500 RPM punch it type dealio. They need RPM. You need like at least 4,000 RPM to have any fun with an RB26, even standard. So if you have to rev it to seven to have, I guess, a proper bit of fun in the car, it means it's, well, you're breaking the speed limit, but this, you can short shift and it stays on boost. It's fantastic. It is just so much fun. I cannot stress this enough. There isn't enough jet trade gearboxes in the world for every GTR to have one, unfortunately, but yeah, me personally, I just, I don't know how you could own a five speed GTR once you've driven a six speed one. They're just so good. I'll show you again. second third it's fun it's just so much more fun with a jet track so being a four-door has its advantages kids friends whatever you want to put in the back a little bit more practical but take away the four-door part and for me this car is just all about this gearbox this gearbox makes this car jet track 411s